Good evening, family. I trust I find you well today. Thank you so much for joining us on this platform, Celebration Pals. My name is Sylvan. I'm an associate pastor with Celebration Churches Johannesburg, and I'm excited to be your host this evening. I'm not going to take much of your time, but today I want to take an opportunity just to have a conversation with you with something that God has in place on my heart. But before I do that, I just want to remind you of some of the things that we have, of course, spoken about on this platform. For some of you, you recall early in the year, we had an amazing series, which was called Against Our Lords. And it was a series where we had various individuals coming to speak to us about what God had done in their lives, how God had given them victory, despite and in spite of the odds being stacked against them. I want to take an opportunity to encourage you to Take a moment, scroll through our Facebook channels and our YouTube channel, and you are going to find some of these stories which are faith-filled and that can encourage you and your family. Over the last couple of weeks, Dr. McConey has been um, teaching us in what we dubbed the School of Leadership. Now, this was life-changing and was life-transforming. I want to also encourage you, if you did not get an opportunity to listen um, into some of those nuggets that he was beginning to shell out. I would encourage you to lean in and take an opportunity to listen to that. In fact, what you could do as well is to go into our archives on our various uh, social media platforms and you are going to find more of this information. You know, I believe that in this world that we are, we are living in, the only way that as children of God we are going to conquer the marketplace is when we double down in to the Word of God and seek something that the world cannot give. And I believe that you and I have it because we have got Christ. In fact, the Bible says that Christ in us, the hope of glory. So I believe that you have to dig in and let us begin to seek God. So friends and family, take an opportunity uh, to dig into some of those messages and your life will never be the same again. Now, today I'm going to be your host and over the next couple of minutes, I'm going to be sharing with you something that has been on my heart for a couple of weeks. And to start with, I want to quickly pray. Then I'll read from the book of Luke chapter 1, verse 57, a very uh, interesting and a familiar uh, passage of scripture. Father, I want to thank you for the opportunity and the time that you've given us with my friends and family as we begin to have this conversation and as we begin to uh, discuss your word on how we can grow and to become what you have called us to. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Now, I can see most of you that have joined us now. Um, if you are probably watching this broadcast live, I just want to ask you to put an emoji right there to say, I am here. Just say, I am here, so that we know. And you can put a fire emoji, whatever emoji you feel like putting in there. Just feel, share, like, and make all your friends out there know that something is happening on the Celebration Powers. Now, if you are, of course, watching this after the fact, I would encourage you to just put a message, put a comment, and let us know your feedback. Now, I'll read from the book of Luke chapter 1, and I'll start from verse 57. And the Bible reads an interesting story, or rather the Bible records an interesting story um, of the birth of John. In fact, the subject reads the birth of the prophet John. And I'm going to read a couple of verses and of scripture. So just bear with me for a few minutes because there are a couple of things that are going to come out of here that you will find quite interesting. Now, we'll start from verse number 57. The Bible records, When Elizabeth's pregnancy was full term, she gave birth to a son. All her family, friends, and neighbors heard about it. And they too were overjoyed, for they realized that the Lord had showered his wonderful mercy upon her. When the baby was eight days old, according to their custom, all the family and friends would come together uh, and come to a circumcision ceremony, the Bible reads. Everyone assumed at that ceremony that the parents would name the baby Zachariah after his father. But Elizabeth spoke up and said, no, his name shall be John. What? They exclaimed. No one in your family line has that name. So they guessed that to the father's baby to ask what to name the child. And he uh, motioned uh, for a writing tablet to the amazement of all he wrote, his name is John. 
Now, for some of you asking why Zachariah had to write on the tablet, so you know early, um, early in the passage, um, the angel is saying that Zachariah would not be able to speak until, um, you know, the birth um, of his son, uh, John. So for nine months, uh, the guy was a mute. Now, I'll continue and read from verse number 64. And instantly Zachariah spoke again, the Bible records. Immediately when he, he does that, the Bible says instantly he spoke again and his words of praises to the Lord. The fear of God fell on the people uh, of the village and the news of the astounding event traveled throughout the hill of Judea. Everyone was in awe over it. And I'm reading from the Passion Translation, by the way. All who heard this news were astonished and wondered. Since a miracle brought his birth, this is John, they're saying, since a miracle brought his birth, what on earth will this child become? Clearly, God's presence is upon this child in a powerful way. It's quite amazing, especially as we go to that last part of the scripture where everybody begins to say, what on earth will this child become? You know, today I want to talk to you using as a subject, becoming. You know, as I was reading the scripture and reading the word of God, particularly this particular subject, it begin, I began to have a couple of thoughts come to my mind and uh, start to be reminded of some of the various books. And I'm an avid reader and some of the books that I've been reading. And one of the books that came to my mind when I read this particular line, which says, what on earth will this child become? My mind quickly ran to a book written by Michelle Obama. As some of you know, the first black um, African, um, or rather the first black first lady African to walk into the White House. And Michelle Obama wrote immediately after she left the White House a book called Becoming. And as some of you would know, she grew up in the South Shore, a working class um, Chicago neighborhood, which wasn't prominent about anything. But one thing about Michelle Obama that she brings in the book is the fact that she even at a young age, as a young girl, she had aspirations, she had dreams, she had things that she believed God for, or rather she believed for. I'm not sure whether she, she said she believed God for, but the things that she believed for in her life. But despite growing up in a society that typically would have not have been viewed to bring out a first lady, she became that. And of course, some of you would know, despite the challenges of her growing up as a young girl, she managed to have the opportunity to go to some of the Ivy League schools in the U.S., the, the, the Princeton University and uh, Harvard Law School, where she started a law, a law degree. And from there, she just began to grow and to blossom. You know, I believe as I was going through this and thinking about the aspect on becoming, is to say, in life, what we are today can certainly not be what we will be tomorrow. And in many cases, one of the key questions that I always ask myself, and I believe that you have to ask yourself, is who as an individual are you becoming? You know, I believe that who we are today certainly cannot be who God aspires us to be tomorrow. You know, for some of us, we become what we build on a daily basis. There could be our habits. There could be the things that we spend a lot of time doing. And I believe that habits are forming each and every moment, whether we like it or not. Habits are forming. And in many cases, we are a resultant of the habits that we have built. And whether you like it or not, there is one fact about life, that you are going to become something or you are going to become someone. And I'm reminded when I was a young boy growing up, I had aspirations to be or to be somebody in a different way. At some point, I thought, okay, I was going to be a lawyer. At some point, I thought, um, man, probably politics is the game for me. I love politics. So many things would come to my mind. By the way, I'm still not yet done with, with those imaginations. But I believe that at every point in life, you are moving towards becoming something or someone. No matter the age that you are. 
So long you are alive, you are progressing to become something or to become someone. And at times I believe we do not see where we are going because we are so consumed with where we are. And I believe today as we have this conversation, I believe the agenda and the mandate for God is for his children to go or to become what he has predestined us to be. You know, I believe certainly from the bottom of my heart that, you know, where we are today cannot be a replica of what we are going to become tomorrow. I believe what we are going to become tomorrow has to be built on a solid foundation, but on a solid foundation of progression. And I believe that as a child of God and as children of God, we have been called out to become that which God has built us to be. Now, and today I want to take a few moments just to walk us through on a few thoughts around how as a child of God, we can move from a place where we are today to a place where God wants us to be. You know, I like what Albert Einstein says. He says, everybody is a genius. But if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. Can you imagine? If you judge yourself beyond what God has not designed you to, you are always going to grow or build your life on a false hopes and foundations of what God has not called you. And today I want to take a moment just to speak to you to say, how can you as a child of God become what God has called you to be. You know, there could be people around you, there could be people in your society who could be asking, what on earth will this child become? There could be situations around you that could be speaking to say, you will not become what God has called you. But today I want to just encourage you to give you hope, to give you an expectation, to tell you that you, God has an agenda for your life, that you become that which he has called you to be. You know, in many cases and in many situations, in many cases, in many situations, there are things that arise. There are circumstances that arise. For instance, right now the world is in a pandemic and we are asking what is going to become of the world. And people are in fear. And at times the fear comes because of the current circumstance. But today, my agenda is to begin to speak to somebody that you ask yourself some very critical questions to say, what am I becoming? Or rather, what is God designed me to become? Let me make a few points here that I, um, of course, find to be very critical. Number one, you see, becoming is not a thing that happens on day number one. But becoming is a progressively ongoing challenge for life. You know, as I was reading the book by Michelle Obama, she says something that I found quite interesting. Michelle discovers that personal growth is no finish line. There is no moment in time when she's uh, done evolving. You see, because becoming is an ongoing process of self-creation, that's what she says. But I believe for us, it is an ongoing process of God creating and giving us vision. And it requires always understanding that there is always more and there is always better ahead of us. You know, as you go through life, you always need to realize that whilst the future is going to be more demanding than the present. But I believe that the future holds greater than the present. Because our God is a God who is a progressive God. The Bible says he's a God who moves from glory to glory. And I believe that even for you as a child of God, do not look at the current circumstances. Don't look at the current situation that you could be in as a precursor or as a determinant of where you are going in life. Even as a leader, you could be going through challenges that are caused by the pandemic through your business. You need to develop the enough capacity to show through the challenges. You know, Pastor Tom always makes reference to say, perseverance will always outlast 
persecution. And I believe that in your journey of becoming who God has called you to, you need to always bear in mind that becoming is an ongoing challenge. It is a challenge that is, on, is not based on a day. It is not based on an event, but it is based on us progressively, progressively growing to the point that God has called us to. You know, the future, as you know, will always be demanding that the past. That's one thing you need to know, that the, the future is always going to be demanding than the past. But whilst the future is always demanding that the past, the future always holds a greater good than the past. You know, I remember as I was growing up, you would think that you have passed one level in school. Then you realize that you are moving from elementary mathematics and all of a sudden you are going into what they called in those days pure mathematics. And it always never became easier. It became harder and harder and harder. And now when you are a grown-up man, you are now adulting, so they call it. But I believe that at every stage, God makes grace available to give you the capacity to grow, to give you the capacity to be fruitful in the season that God would have made for you. So folks, let me tell you this, that the future Indeed, we always be demanding that the present, but we are committed to the future because the, our God is on our side. You know, even in the process of becoming, you need to always remember that whatever you nurture will grow. Think about it. That whatever you nurture will grow. I would um, think back a little bit in my life that some of the things and the habits that I've nurtured some in the positive have grown me they have built me but some in the negative have destroyed and now once this thing is embedded in you you are trying to reverse it and to unlearn it it only happens by the grace of God and I believe that as the children of God in our journey and in our process of becoming, we need to understand that whatever you will nurture will grow. Think about it. If you nurture your marriage, if you want a successful marriage, you have to nurture your marriage. If you want successful relationships, you have to nurture those relationships. You have to sow seed into them. You have to spend time in those relationships, nurturing them and building them. Because whatever you nurture will grow. And whatever you leave unattended, it dies or it grows out of cuter. It's even like the human body. If you nurture your body, you eat right, you exercise, you grow and you build yourself. But of course, if you don't do neither of those things, you come out of shape. And the human body, it dies and it suffocates. So as a child of God, I want to encourage you today that, look, remember that as you are walking this journey of becoming, that whatever you are going to nurture in life, whatever you are going to continue to nurture, you are going to continue to grow, that thing will grow. What are you nurturing? What habits are you allowing to nurture? What habits are you allowing to grow in yourself and on the pessimistic or on the negative side? What are some of those things that you are doing that begin to kill? I want to encourage you today to begin to think and say, what are some of the things that I'm nurturing? What are some of the things that um, I do not want to see in my life as I become who God has called me to? If you want to become what God has called you to, you need to always remember in your life that there are certain things that you have to kill. And in a minute, I'm going to be referring back to the story that we read of John the Baptist. But I just wanted to make this point to you to say, you know, becoming, whilst it is a challenge, why it is an ongoing challenge, but it is a journey of progression and not an event. And secondly, to say the future is always going to be placing demands on us as the children of God. The future is going to be always placing demands on us. Can you imagine three years ago, we never thought the whole world would come into a lockdown because of COVID. Why? The future is always going to be placing a demand on humanity and on us as the children of God. But despite all that, we have seen 
technology rise. We have seen um, uh, a lot of things that we thought we could not do because of many reasons. Starting, we are starting to do things differently. Why? Because the future has placed a demand on us. And I believe that as a child of God, as you are going through challenges, just look the, at them as aspects that are putting a demand on you to be better than who you have been. And lastly, whatever your nature will grow. I want you to pay a lot of attention to this. That whatever you nature will grow in life. What are you nurturing? Write in the chat right now that what are you nurturing in your journey of becoming who God has called you to be? Even, even in your business, what, what sort of decisions and what sort of things are you nurturing? Even in your workplace, what, what sort of habits are you nurturing? Are you are you are you nurturing uh, habits of flirting? Are you are you are you are you nurturing habits of of doing things that are that are outside the auspices and the policies of your organization? What are the kind of things that you are nurturing? Even in your home and in your family, what sort of habits? What sort of culture are you nurturing? Because whatever you nurture, will grow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, even as we come back to the story of John the Baptist, we find John the Baptist, and I find him to be a very interesting character. You know, John the Baptist, for some of you who would know, John the Baptist was a man of great passion. He was a man of great passion. It's quite interesting that John the Baptist was passionate about this calling that God had called him to. And I believe that as children of God, even as we are on the journey of becoming you need to understand and to know to say, what am I passionate about? Am I willing to die? Am I willing to, to, to fight for that thing that I am passionate about? John the Baptist was passionate about his calling. John the Baptist was passionate about what God had called him to be. You know, and I believe that as a children of God, God has not called you. Listen, God has not called you or God has not given you grace to be something else, but God has given you grace to be that which he has called you to be. And I want to encourage you that you need to dig in, you need to, you need to dig in and double in and be passionate about the things that God has called you to. Show some passion, show some energy of those things that God has called you to. Invest in them. And when we read further about John the Baptist, we, we, we even find that it is amazing that John the Baptist was one of the only men that Jesus himself declared and he says, Truly I tell you, among those born of a woman has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. The same child who they asked it and said, What is going to become of him? Jesus himself calls and declares that there is no one greater or who will be greater than John the Baptist. You know, I believe that for some of you, you could have questioned where you are. You could have questioned what God is doing in your life. You are questioning what you are going to become. But let me tell you that for a person like John the Baptist, known for eating honey and staying in the wilderness, was even declared by Jesus in private that for anyone born of a woman, there is no one greater than John the Baptist. John the Baptist, the forerunner of Christ, but the same child who at some point was asked to say, what on earth will become of this child? But he became the forerunner of Christ. He set the stage for Jesus. The last prophet to declare the coming of Jesus Christ. Despite and in spite of all the challenges that could have happened in his uh, being conceived, but this was the man who even the village would have doubted what was going to become of him. But the Bible records and it says he was the man who set the platform. Listen, he was the man who baptized Jesus. Can you imagine? The Bible even records that he was a second cousin of Jesus. Wow. You know, and I believe that John the Baptist... Whilst there could have been doubts about what would become of him, he became a great name that even we read about today. But what was the secret in John the Baptist's story to him becoming that which he was called 
by God too. What was the secret in John the Baptist's life? You know, and I would take you to John himself on John chapter 3 verse 30 where he says that, that he, Christ, must become greater and I must become less. Other versions read and says that you would increase and that I decrease. You know, the secret of John the Baptist to becoming that which God had called him to be or to becoming to a place of where God had called him to be was in understanding that I have to be less and let the Christ in me grow. Let, 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 let Jesus grow in me. You see, because he understood that the bigger Jesus becomes in his life, the greater his increase and his prosperity will be. Can I ask you a question today? Is Jesus greater in your life than your hopes and your aspirations? Is Jesus greater in your life than your career, your business, your family? Is Jesus the pinnacle and the center of everything in your life? And when we read of John the Baptist, the greatest prophet, the man who was high, who, who spent most of his life in the wilderness before he then came out of, uh, 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 of the wilderness and declaring that prepare ye the way he is coming, the forerunner. He understood that when I become less and Jesus grows in me, that is the only thing that can give me the ability to become what God has called me to be. You know, I want to encourage somebody out there and say, if you want to become or you want to get to a place where God has called you to, begin to seek him that you, the man, the humanity in you, becomes less. And the God in you begins to grow. Hallelujah. You know, as we read further, even the story of John the Baptist, I'm encouraged. You know, as, as, as you go through it early in the uh, in the scriptures, we find um, that um, Zachariah, the, the father of John, when initially he was, uh, uh, the angel Gabriel appeared to him and said, hey, look, your um, wife Elizabeth is going to a boy a son. And um, he, he himself could not even believe it. He doubted the prophet. He doubted, he doubted, uh, excuse me, he doubted the angel. And the angel came to say, you are going to have a child. In fact, he said, show me a sign. And I like what the angel Gabriel did. The angel Gabriel said, I will show you a sign, but the sign is you are going to become mute and you only speak when you see it. And this began to remind me of what the word of God says. To say, the ability for us to build our future lies in the words of our mouth. For you to become what God has called you to. The miracle is in your mouth. Think about it. That every time you speak faith to a thing. Every time you speak hope to a thing. What you are going to get is what you speak into it. You know the Bible records and says that the power of life and death is in the tongue. And I want to encourage you that as you walk in the journey, as you see Christ in your journey of becoming, the power lies in your mouth. I want to encourage you, friends and family, that speak faith. Speak nothing but speak faith. Zachariah said to the angel that, how do you expect me to believe this? I'm an old man. And my wife is too old to have a child. Doubt was floating in. And he wanted to see a tangible sign. But you see, at times we cannot see the tangible signs of the future, but we can speak to the future to be what we want it to be. The Bible, our Corinthians says, and since we have this same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I have believed, therefore I speak. I want to encourage you, friends and family, that if you want to anything to become what it, you want it to be, you have to speak life to it. What are you speaking to your marriage? What are you speaking to your relationships? 
What are you speaking to your business? You have to speak life. Because the power of life and death lies in your tongue. Let me tell you, folks, if you have nothing good to say about anybody or something, just keep it quiet. Why? Because the power of life and death, the power of becoming, the power of creation is in the tongue. And as believers, if we want to become that which God has called us to, I want to encourage you, speak nothing but speak life. Speak life to the situations. Let's speak faith to our situations. There could be challenges in the home. Yes, the world could be in a pandemic, but we are not going to speak words of hopelessness, but we are going to speak the word of faith. That all our God is able. He is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I can ever think nor imagine. Let's speak life. Speak life. Speak life. What words are you speaking to the future that you, that, 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 that you want to see become? What words are you speaking into your future? What words are you speaking into your business? What words are you speaking into your relationship? I want to encourage you, if you want to become that which God has called you to, speak nothing but speak life. Speak faith. Speak hope. Speak faith and hope in your marriage. Speak faith and hope in your children. Encourage them. Words of encouragement that build. Hallelujah. You see, because as we were reading the story of John, Zachariah was a, well, he was a doubter. And, and you can imagine he, he was doubting because of what he could see then, of where he was. But he did not understand that our God is a God who moves from one level of glory to another. And that is what I want to say to you today. That speak life. Because our God is taking us somewhere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now the second thing that I want to speak about in our journey of becoming is to grow at the pace of grace. You know, I love the pace of grace. Someone could be asking, what is the pace of grace? The pace of grace is the pace of God. You see, because God is not a God of speed. He is not a God of speed. He is into seed. Yes, I know there are times when God can grow things and God can accelerate things, but he is a God who builds line upon line and precept upon precept. And hence why God really treasures the concept of the seed. You know, if you read in the book of uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 80, the same um, subject that we're talking about, about John, the Bible records in verse 80 that afterwards, their son, John, grew up and was strengthened by the Holy Spirit. And he grew in his love for God. Listen, the Bible here is mentioned almost twice, the word grew. His son grew up and was strengthened by the Holy Spirit. And he grew in his love for God. John chose to live in the lonely wilderness until the day of his public appearance to Israel. You know, let me tell you something. That at times in life, you might feel like you are probably in a wilderness moment where you are not managing to break out and to become what you believe God has called you to become. You, your dream seems probably to be dying away and you are not becoming what God has called you to be. I want to encourage you this evening and say the wilderness moment or a place in the wilderness is not a place of death but it is a place of growth. You know, like I say, that God is not into speed, but he's into seed. Because God never plants trees. He never. He only plants seeds. Because a seed represents to him time. It represents time. 
and it is never a replica of the fruit. So many a times as believers, we confuse our season of seed with our season of seeing fruit. And we think that our season of seed is the seed, is the, is the season that we have been called to becoming. But listen, the season of seed you have not become, but you are progressing to the season of fruit where you become. And I want to encourage you today to say, look, do not waste life challenged and feeling in pain and in hopelessness simply because you are in your seed season. Do not expect to be bearing fruit while at least you are in a season of sowing seed. You see, because your days of early beginnings might look like you are an underdog, but that is the place you are developing roots and are getting grounded. Let me tell you this, that the place, the place of the seed or the place where you develop the capacity, the wilderness moment that uh, uh, John was in. I, I can imagine at that time when uh, uh, John was in the wilderness eating honeycombs and all that. I, I'm sure the people in the village were saying, we told you that what would become of this child? But John understood in himself that he was in a wilderness season a season where he was building capacity. A season where he was growing in God. Where he was growing in his capacity. Growing in his ministry. And he did not confuse his wilderness moment. Which was a season of sowing seed. As a season of reaping fruit. He didn't confuse the two. And I want to encourage you as a child of God to say. Look your season of sowing seed. Might seem like a dark place. A place of seed is a dark place. A place where you, you are not noticed. Can you imagine when you sow a seed in the ground? A few things come to, come to my mind. It is not noticed. In many cases, it is underestimated. Are these seeds going to germinate? And at times, you can even be disqualified. Because of where you grew up, like we spoke about Michelle Obama growing up in um, the middle class, uh, or rather almost in the working class in the in, Ch in the Chicago neighborhood. Who would have thought that a young uh, girl from Chicago would be uh, the first black lady in the White House? Nobody would have thought about that. But I want to encourage you that even in the place that seems dark, you have to continue sowing the seed. Because the place of a seed is a place that is dark. It is not noticed. It is a place that is unqualified. And it is a place that is underestimated. And, the, and, 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 and at times, the place of death and the place of destiny could look the same for a season. Why am I saying this? I'll repeat it. That the place of death and the place of destiny can look the same for a season. Why? When you don't plant a seed, it can't grow. So for the seed to grow, it has to be dug out, dug in, and buried. Almost like a place of death. But no, 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 no. It is not a place of death. It is a place where destiny and hopes are created. But when I say the place of death and the place of destiny look the same for a season, it is because it is dark. It is lonely. You are dug in and you are covered out. But whilst people are not seeing what's happening underneath, there is something that will be happening under the soil. And I believe for many of us, the enemy is trying to convince you that the place of your planting is the place of your death. 
But we want to remind the enemy that the place of my planting is not the place of my death, but it is the place where my destiny is created, where my destiny is built up. It is a place that builds the foundations of me becoming what God has called me to. You know, for some of you who have heard me give this illustration of the Chinese bamboo tree. You see, they say for a Chinese bamboo tree, when you plant the seeds, nothing happens for a period of four to five years. Nothing germinates. You can water it. You can fertilize it. You can watch it all you want, but for four or five years, you will see nothing coming up to the ground. That for some could be a place where you would disqualify that there is nothing that is going to come out of this. That what on earth is going to become of this seed or of this child. But what's amazing about the Chinese bamboo tree is that in year five, you will start to see the tree sprouting up. Now, it is recorded that in six weeks that follow, the Chinese bamboo tree will grow as much as two feet per day until it grows to 90 feet tall. In extreme cases, they actually say bamboo trees, the Chinese bamboo trees, within a period of 24 to 36 months, they can grow to over 150 feet tall. They, they have an exponential growth after year number five. Now, let me tell you what happens in the year number one to number four when you cannot see the shoots of the tree. The Chinese, the secret of the Chinese bamboo tree is it starts by growing down first before it starts growing up. You see, and I believe that as a child of God, as you set yourself up to become that which God has called you to be, you need to be able to understand the aspect of building the foundations. You need to begin to understand the aspect of building the base of growing down before you start rushing to grow up. You know, I believe that in this generation, God has called us that we, 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 we might be planted at seeds. We, we might be in a place of obscurity. We might be in a place where, where, where we are not known. We might be in a place where we are noticed. We might be in a place where we are not identified. But I want to encourage you today that whilst you might be in that place, God is working something in the background. For you to become who he has called you to. Like John the Baptist, some of us could have been called names that what shall become of this? What shall become of this situation? What shall become of this marriage? What shall become of this child? What shall become of this business? But I'm here to encourage you today to say do not give up because God is in your business to take you to the place where he has called you to become. You are going to become what God has ordained for you. He says, for I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. The plans to give you a you know, hope and an expected end. Friends and family, I want to encourage us today that do not be discouraged with the current situation that is going on, going on around us in the world because our God has given us victory. The Bible reminds us that we are more than conquerors. We are more than those that have conquered. We are more than conquerors. We are more than even the situations that we are in. We are more than even the circumstances that are around us. The circumstances that are around us cannot bring us down. But I want to encourage you today on this platform, friends and family, that we are becoming what God has called us to be. We are becoming greater than our circumstances. 
And as you become, I want to remind you that becoming is a progressive challenge. And the future is always going to place a demand on us. But just lean in. I want to encourage you to lean in because you have to lean in. We are not of those that give up. We are not of those that draw back. But we will press in. We will press in. You know, as we come to an end today, I want to encourage you that as you walk this journey of life, remember to nurture the thing that you want to grow. How do you nurture it? By your words. Speak words of life. Speak words of life. Speak words of life. And remember, you grow at the pace of grace. Because God is not into speed, but he is into seed. And at times, the place of seed might seem like obscurity. The place of seed might seem like it is a place that is wasted. It is a place of pain and hurt. But let me remind you, for a season, a place of death and a place of destiny might look the same. But like a Chinese bamboo tree, your season of exponential growth is coming. Your season of beginning to see the fruits of the things that you have been building. Your season of seeing the fruits of the things that you have been believing God for will come. You see, because the fruits of a thing are never seen on the day that they are planted. But it is all in the process of time. So friends and family, I want to encourage you today that in our journey of becoming who God has called us to, continue to dig in, continue to seek his face. And surely, he will do something greater for you. And I believe that the latter rain is going to be greater than the former. Because we have been called. We are the called out ones. We have been called to become. Like John the Baptist, the forerunner, the one who set the stage, the one who baptized Jesus. We have been called all our passions, our dreams and our hopes and through God we are more than conquerors thank you so much for joining me today I trust that you found these words encouraging and if you want to speak to any one of us or you want to connect with any one of us please do post your details, DM us for your details and we'll be happy to connect with you because I believe that in this season of us walking our journey of becoming, God is on a mission to grow us. So be encouraged and I want to encourage you to continuously build each other with the right words and remember that you are becoming that which God has called you to be. Thank you so much for joining us today on Celebration Power and God bless you until we meet again.